Psalms 22 through 24. Psalm 22, 1 through 31. 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? 2. O my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and I am not silent. 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. 4. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. 5. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. 6. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. 7. All they that see me laugh at me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, 8. He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. 9. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. 10. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. 11. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. 12. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. 13. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravenous and a roaring lion. 14. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. 15. My strength is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and has brought me down to the dust of death. 16. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they have pierced my hands and my feet. 17. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. 18. They part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture. 19. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength, haste thee to help me. 20. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. 21. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. 22. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation I will praise thee. 23. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him, and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. 24. For he hath not despised, nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. 25. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. 26. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindred of the nation shall worship before thee. 28. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. 29. All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow down before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. 30. A seed shall serve him, and it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. 31. They shall come, and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done this. This is the first of three psalms that portray Jesus' crucifixion, death, and resurrection. The psalm starts out by stating Jesus' last words on the cross. The repetition of the phrase, my God, indicates that God is still his God despite the fact that his spirit had left Jesus. Jesus was really a man, God transferred himself into the body of a human, but obviously the full glory of God cannot be in one man. Therefore God was still in heaven and omnipresent in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God came into Jesus when he was baptized and that was when he started to perform miracles. However, he never sinned because the will of God was his own. So to Jesus, the most terrible part of God's pouring his wrath out upon him was that the Spirit of God left him. The next few verses present themselves as a justification of God. God hears the prayers of the fathers and delivered them. Next, Jesus cries that he is a worm despite the fact he insists that he has trusted in God since in his mother's womb. This is symbolic of the sins of the world being placed upon Jesus. The bulls and the lions surrounding him and despising him are symbols of the powers of this world. Compare Mark 15, 31-32. 31. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said amongst themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. 32. 
let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. Here is verse 14 again. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax that is melted in the midst of my bowels. Compare with John 19:34. 34. 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Today we have the medical knowledge to say that for the blood and water to come out of his side, Jesus' heart had to rupture. This fulfills, my heart is like wax that is melted in the midst of my bowels. This also wouldn't have been apparent to the writers of the gospel and therefore couldn't have been faked. I tell my bones is a very apt description of one who is hanging on a cross, as is they pierce my hands and feet. Compare John 19, 23-24. 23. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. 24. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Without an explanation like this, the psalm wouldn't make sense, since they would either divide the garments or cast lots for them. In the next few verses, Jesus praises God in front of the assembly of Israel and shows his mercy to the weak. Then Jesus says God will be praised to the ends of the earth. In the gospel stories, Israel is always preached to first, then to the Gentiles. None can keep their own soul alive, a very New Testament statement. The next psalm speaks of the death of Jesus and the beginning of his overcoming death. Psalms 23, 1-6 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. 3. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This describes the death of Jesus after he was killed on the cross. Jesus speaks of himself as a sheep being led by the Lord. God is in control, and his Messiah shall rule forever despite death. Restoreth my soul refers to the resurrection of Jesus. The Messiah is described as being struck with the rod of men in Samuel, but here the rod of God comforts Jesus. Psalms 24, 1 through 10. 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwelt therein. 2. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? 4. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. 5. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. 6. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Silah. 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. 8. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. 9. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. 10. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. This is the overcoming of Jesus. Notice that the only one who can fulfill all the requirements is the Lord himself. However, the person is called Jacob because he is of the Messianic line. Notice also that the Lord addresses himself. One of the reasons which people who are Christians but do not believe that Jesus is God give us a reason that Jesus cannot be God, is that Jesus talks to God. This psalm shows that God can talk to himself, even if this is only for our understanding. This book is available to download in its entirety for free at smashwords.com and eventually here on YouTube. If you want to hear more, subscribe to this channel. God bless.